What's up guys? Chris here with Cohesive Friendship Unit. Just me today. This is our second of two Spooktober reviews. Uh, if you want to check out our Blair Witch review, you can find the cards. Find it uh, in our reviews playlist or just search for it. I'm sure you will find it. But today we're talking about a different kind of scary. One of my earliest childhood gaming memories, not quite the earliest, but right up there, is uh, my neighbor across the street had an arcade cabinet for the game Ghouls and Ghosts. And I, uh, I mean, I was very young, so I was only playing on the first level, but I remember playing uh, that game quite a lot. And it was nice that they owned the cabinet, so there were unlimited quarters to play with. And uh, I just was fascinated with the game as a kid. And my grandparents actually had the NES game on cart, so I had even more experience. Basically what I'm saying is I played Ghouls and Ghosts all growing up, and uh, yeah, it's a hard game. I could never get very far in it. Nonetheless, I could respect it even at a young age. I knew it was better than a lot of those random NES carts at my grandparents' house. So, now that I'm a bit older, a little bit of hair on my chest, why not tackle something as spookily difficult as ghouls and ghosts and that is what we are going to be reviewing not the original but super ghouls and ghosts and uh, before we get into this review we are doing a giveaway at 1500 subs for a steam copy of the crash bandicoot trilogy all you have to do is be subscribed and uh, we would really appreciate your support but on to the review super ghouls and ghosts I am going to be talking about this in the context of 2019. Something has happened. We have gotten the SNES Classic and we have gotten the SNES app on Nintendo Switch Online. This allows us to not only have save states, but have rewind states. So that's kind of what I've been waiting for before I tackled one of these harder games. And boy is Super Ghouls and Ghosts hard. And some of it is fair and fine, some of it is exactly not fair and fine. Nonetheless, the music is really good, the gameplay is really solid, and the graphics and the places the game takes you is really an impressive Super Nintendo game, and a fun one at that. Uh, I have noticed in playing it that Unlike a lot of Super Nintendo games, there is a life select. You can tell yourself how many lives you want to start with, and lives are actually fairly plentiful in this game. And furthermore, you can adjust the difficulty down to beginner, which can shift uh, enemies and things like that. So I would recommend max number of lives on beginner. You have save states, and you have the ability to rewind the game. And I found that the combination of these things uh, allowed me to really get a grip on things and after about level 2 I was actually sailing through the beginner mode of this game in a fun way not in a frustrating way with uh, minimal casualties I only had to rewind a few certain BS times uh, there were times when like there were times when the level design was misleading I would be trying to do impossible jumps and basically killing myself uh, infinitely, but the ability to rewind and get around those BS moments is super much appreciated. Now, uh, again, I think this is now, I, I think in the past it was not that fun. Well, it was fun, but it was not that approachable. You wouldn't really see much past the second level unless you really put some time and effort into it. Uh, now, a combination of that of that uh, live selection and that difficulty selection coupled with the uh, modern benefits of save states and rewinds makes this actually quite an enjoyable experience. I would recommend uh, definitely running through the game on beginner difficulty, getting your, getting your, you know, getting things together and then, you know, you can ratchet it up as desired. Uh, there are a few dated problematic things uh, such as hit stun and knockback, basically when you get hit. It is not dissimilar to Castlevania, where you are basically arbitrarily thrown backwards, and that could lead to your death. Luckily, there's only a few levels where uh, that is a real big issue. Most of the times, being hit back isn't actually that big of a deal. Uh, and yeah, guys, uh, Super Ghost 
ghouls and ghosts, I would give uh, four spooks out of nine for the difficulty alone, but thanks to uh, modern conventions, I would knock that down to one spook. If you want a game that you can run through in about an hour and a half with these rewind features and stuff, this is, a, this is one to play. I know a lot of people praise uh, games in the SNES Online app like uh, Super Mario World Legend of Zelda and uh, Super Metroid, but those games take quite a bit of time, whereas uh, Super Ghouls and Ghosts can be completed, at least the first run, in I would say 90 minutes for the average person using a couple of rewinds. And yeah, I, I, I'm I glad that I finished this. It's like a personal achievement for me. And I would recommend this to uh, anyone who has been intimidated by this before. Now is the time. Happy Spooktober, guys. I will catch you next time.